Good morning, everybody. So, <clears throat> allow me to adopt the protocol already established, but allow me to single out some persons who I think are so critical to the success of our endeavor. So, I want to say welcome once again to our youth interns, those beautiful 14 to 15-year-olds who prove that our youth have the capacity and the resilience to navigate effectively the digital ecosystem. I also want to welcome our youth researchers, those vibrant, valuable young people who went into the schools and supported teachers as experts in how to approach and how to work with young people, especially when it comes to digital skills instruction. And I want to welcome and thank our teachers, who I know so many of you here, who, you know, when I first went to them, they said, oh, another training? You know, you know, another training? But who were, despite their already heavy workload, were more than willing to participate in teacher professional development because they understood the value of that process to their students. And I want to thank, yeah, yes, yes, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And I want to thank our employers network, those group of like-minded individuals who realize the importance of connecting education with the workplace, who realize that if they lend their voice to curriculum development, to innovations in education, then the future for St. Lucia looks bright. So I want to welcome you, all of you here today. And so, I was not supposed to give the feature address, but um, I'm glad to do it. And so while I was preparing this, I thought, what should I share? And so I want to share some of my thoughts on the future of education. I want to start with a, past, with, with, with a novel I read in 1987. And this was a novel by V.S. Naipaul. He is one of the Caribbean's Nobel laureates in literature. And that novel was called The House for Mr. Biswas. Do you know that novel? Yeah, if, if you know it, you're in my age group. <laughs> um, it was the first time a novel made me laugh, it made me cry, but it, 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 but it made me smarter. And I remember one passage from the novel that has always stayed with me. It's about two cousins preparing for the exhibition exams, what we used to call in St. Common Endurance. The entire family, you know, you know, rallies behind one of those boys. They call him Bright because he was able to write down the entire Nelson's first reader in English into an exercise book. Now, don't let me ask who remembers that, that book because that will age you. So, I'm not going to ask. But this boy was able to take this book and rewrite it into an exercise book. And everybody thought, this guy is brilliant. You know, and everybody thought he would ace those exams. But if, you, if you've read the novel, and if you're an astute educator, or even speculated about what real learning is, you will know that he fails miserably. Miserably. Now in later works of Naipaul, he boldly presents his thoughts on the nature of our education system in the Caribbean. And this can be summarized with five words. The abstractness of our education. I'm going to say it again to let it sink in. The abstractness of our education. So what was Naipaul saying? The abstractness of our education refers to the observation that the education systems in a lot of our societies, especially in the Caribbean, often emphasize abstract and theoretical knowledge over practical 
real world skills. And this abstractness can manifest itself in several ways. Let me just give you four examples. Teachers, curricula that is disconnected from local culture, from local history, from the practical needs of our population. A focus on root memorization, remember that? And standardized testing over critical thinking and problem solving skills. A lack of attention to the pressing socio-economic, political, and cultural issues faced by our population. And of course, a disconnect between education and the workplace. So essentially, the abstractness that Naipaul speaks of has been the downfall of our education system for a long time. And though we have produced great scholars and academics, we still fall short because we're not producing great creators and innovators. We're not doing that. So this system is one that is disconnected from our clients. And who are our clients? Our clients are our students. Our clients are our employers. Our clients are all the different institutions and even families who need education to stand as a bulwark against the dystopia that is threatening our societies. And so it's a system that values simply knowing. Once you know, you're good. But it doesn't value the process of doing and the process of becoming, that process of growth. So today, two critical questions loom. The first is, can we ever move education in the Caribbean from abstract to connected? And that was a deliberate pun, right? Yeah? And the second is how? So the answers, question one, a resounding yes. Question two, guess what the answer is? Follow the example of St. Lucia Connected. Yeah, I said you all for that, right? So ladies and gentlemen, I will boldly say that the St. Lucia Connected activity has found the formula for reaching this milestone. This incredible initiative, of course, funded by the United States Agency of, for International Development and implemented by World Education, has revolutionized the digital landscape of St. Lucia and transformed the lives of its youth. So, Connected has successfully set in motion the mechanisms for connecting learning by building digital resilience among St. Lucia's youth, equipping them with the skills to navigate the complex digital ecosystem. And we have used a positive youth development approach that has integrated the digital skills into critical thinking, into the development of, of learning resources, strategies for instruction that will definitely foster a new era in teaching and learning in St. Lucia. But I am not simply here to regurgitate what this project has accomplished. I think this has already been done and you've heard it over and over and over today. So definitely, as this current activity period of Connected draws to a close, we can confidently say it has achieved its objectives and garnered tremendous support from the Ministry of Education, school principals, educators, and, and most importantly, the youth of St. Lucia. But I want to go back to where I started, the abstractness of our education. If we are to successfully address the situation that despite collected efforts still exist within our region, a lot more work needs to be done. So what do we do? 
I think the impact of this groundbreaking initiative should not be confined to St. Lucia alone, so I'm making my recommendations now. There are other jurisdictions in the Caribbean that can benefit from our innovative approach to reconnecting education with its clients. Suffice to say, we have had interest from countries in the OECS who seek to replicate connected activities to enhance the digital skills capacity of their own youth and, of course, improve instruction through embracing a PYD integrated approach. One of the key pillars of the future of education lies in teacher professional development. Having collaborated with Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and ICDF Taiwan to develop the capacity to deliver certified teacher training in technology enhanced learning sets up amazing opportunities to support other education systems grappling with digital education and digital skills integration within the context. But we need to go beyond this. Stakeholders, the stakeholders who so thoughtfully co-designed this initiative also recognize the immense potential of maker spaces and the creation of open education resources to empower teachers and students and foster a culture of creativity and innovation within classrooms. By providing teachers with the necessary support and mentorship through communities of practice, we can create a collaborative ecosystem where educators can thrive and continuously enhance their practices. Another exciting prospect is the implementation of the Digital Skills Competency Framework. Drawing on the invaluable lessons learned through the development of the St. Lucia Digital Skills Competency Framework, other jurisdictions can promote a widespread understanding of digital skills and align them with the school curriculum at all levels. They can work with the educators to establish a clear framework for assessing digital skills among students, integrating it into teacher professional development programs and providing resources that facilitate effective digital skills development. Additionally, there is scope to develop a method for systemic assessment aligned with the digital skills competence framework. We can integrate this into the evaluation processes of educational institutions. We can issue digital skills credentials and promote the recognition of these credentials among employers and higher learning institutions. That way, we can empower our students with tangible proof of their digital skills, thereby enhancing their future prospects and opportunities. Additionally, one more time, by taking on a youth-led approach, we can create a context in which youth educators and employers can co-create curricula. And when they co-create curricula, then that curricula has more real-world applications, and that curricula is definitely more meaningful. By involving our young people in research processes that are critical to determine how we are reaching our educational outcomes, and by giving them a platform to share those results and recommendations, we will be enhancing decision-making and positive outcomes within our education system. This was a valuable lesson learned from our youth-led participatory action research. So finally, let me leave you with a simple roadmap. Let's start by first of all embracing. We need to embrace a network-centric approach to education as opposed to merely creating stakeholders. This approach encapsulates the essence of co-creation, ensuring a collaborative approach to addressing issues in education. But we also need to support a youth-led methodology in curriculum design. 
This will ensure relevance and real-world resonance and learning that is more engaging and impactful. Additionally, we need to extend youth engagement to critical research processes for assessing those educational outcomes. Furthermore, we need to advocate for comprehensive digital skills integration across all grades and integrate this into teacher professional development programs. And finally, we need to promote design, creation, and innovation at all curriculum levels so that we can transition from passive learning to active knowledge creation. And finally, reimagine education as an endeavor that is relevant and aligned with evolving global demands. Ladies and gentlemen, the future is bright and promising. It is a future where educators are equipped with tools to excel in technology enhanced teaching, where students thrive and grow in a digitally enabled learning environment, and where the power of digital skills is recognized and valued. So as we close this activity, I want to challenge everyone. I want us to think of ways that we can work together. Let us embark on this transformational journey to shape the future of education in St. Lucia. I thank you.